Hello visionaries. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Marisa Talbert. I'm the founder and CEO of Talbert Law Office, your favorite go-to legal resource for all things business, nonprofit, and intellectual property law. Last week we talked about how to own nothing and control everything. This is a philosophy by one of the wealthiest men to ever exist, John D. Rockefeller. The concept behind it is that if you don't own it, it can't be taken from you. If you missed the last video, stop right now, click the link up above my head, and go watch last week's video. Then come back to this one so you can get the full picture. I'll also link it in the description box down below. So after explaining why you may want to create a holding company, today I want to talk to you about three ways that a holding company can make money. We don't have a lot of time, so let's jump right into it. Number one, dividends from subsidiaries. Okay, so we mentioned this possibility last week. If you're not already familiar with dividends, I'll explain it like this. Owners of a company periodically receive a cut of the profits, which are called dividends. If you own stock in a company, you may receive dividends as a shareholder. In the same way, a holding company is a shareholder in the subsidiary companies that it owns and thus qualifies to receive those dividends as a shareholder. And as I mentioned in the last video, if your holding company is properly set up, those dividends could be tax-free. All right, I hope that's pretty straightforward. Moving right along to number two, providing services. So one way a holding company can provide services is by leasing assets and equipment. Subsidiaries can access equipment and other assets by leasing them from the holding company. This protects the assets from the subsidiary's liabilities and helps to move capital to the holding company. For example, McDonald's as a holding company owns all of the land on which any McDonald's franchise is built. And the franchisees pay rent to the McDonald's holding company for the use of the land on where their McDonald's franchise is located. So to summarize, you have a minuscule revenue stream, no cash reserves, and an albatross of a contract that requires you to go through a slow approval process to enact changes if they're approved at all, which they never are. Am I missing anything? I'm about to sum it up. Tell me about the land. The land. The land, the buildings, how that whole aspect of it works. Ah, pretty simple, really. Franchisee finds a piece of land he likes. Gets a lease, usually 20 years, and it takes our construction loan, throws up a building, and off he goes. So the operator selects the site. Yeah. He picks the property. Right. You provide the training, the system, the operational know-how, and he is responsible for the rest. Um, is there a problem? A big one. You don't seem to realize what business you're in. <laughs> you're not in the burger business. You're in the real estate business. You don't build an empire off a 1.4% cut of a 15 cent hamburger. You build it by owning the land upon which that burger is cooked. What you ought to be doing is buying up plots of land, then turning around and leasing said plots to franchisees who as a condition of their deal should be permitted to lease from you and you alone. This will provide you with two things. One, a steady upfront revenue stream. Money flows in before the first stake is in the ground. Two, greater capital for expansion, which in turn fuels further land acquisition, which in turn fuels further expansion, and so on, and so on. Land. That's where the money is. And more than that, control control over the franchisee. 
fail to uphold quality standards, you cancel their lease. Control over Dick and Mac. End result, you'll have the banks and the franchisees in the palm of your hand. You get what I'm saying? The same can be done with an IP holding company. A company that holds intellectual property can license that intellectual property to the subsidiary company and the subsidiary company pays royalties to the holding company for using a trademark or copyright or other intellectual property assets. Another way that a holding company can provide services is by centralizing people, systems, and teams. A holding company may centralize certain services such as accountants, lawyers, human resources, IT, administration teams. The list can go on and on and on. The teams are centralized with the holding company and work across the group of subsidiaries. And the holding company gets to charge fees to the subsidiaries for the use of those services or those people or those systems. So not only does centralizing these services help maintain efficiency among the subsidiaries, but it also helps each subsidiary save money. And last but not least, the third way that a holding company can make money is by purchasing and selling assets or other subsidiaries. So naturally, if you're going to sell a business, you have to invest and grow the business so that you could sell it at a profit. And typically, subsidiaries are going to have their own distinct brand that provides products or services. And because the subsidiary company is a completely separate legal entity from the holding company, selling a subsidiary is generally going to be a non-complicated ordeal. All right, visionaries, I'd like to hear in the comments what are your business plans for 2023. Do you think a holding company may be right for you either now or in the future? Of course, let me know your questions in the comments as well, and I'd be happy to answer them. With that, that is all I have for today. This is Talbert Law Office, your favorite go-to legal resource for all things business, nonprofit, and intellectual property law. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. And if I don't see you again before the end of the year, you all have a blessed and happy new year. I'll see you in 2023. I made it this far. I'ma keep it pushing, yeah. I even made it through the